Hi guys, this is CS MGTOW. This is a reading of an article that I posted and had accepted on SheddingOfTheEgo.com, Barbarossa's blog. So a recent hangout took place between myself, Aaron Hamlin, the executive director of the Male Contraception Initiative, and David Sokol, the chair of the board of the Male Contraception Initiative. At the end of the hangout, the two gentlemen gave me a brief but thorough education on the process by which women finally gained access to the female pill. The discussion drove home a number of realities to me that I believe are important for men to consider and our quest to achieve the same reproductive freedoms as females. You can watch the hangout on my YouTube channel here. You see, their education came as a response to something I said at the end of our discussion. I had incorrectly assumed and stated that women en masse had successfully petitioned the United States government for research funding into female birth control. This was not actually the case. Although women had indeed petitioned the United States government and the National Institutes of Health, the NIH, both the US government and the NIH had resisted the women who led these efforts for decades. Ever since the dawn of history, men and women have wanted to be able to decide when and whether to have children. Contraceptives have been used in one form or another for thousands of years throughout human history and even prehistory. By the beginning of the 20th century, the idea of oral contraception in conventional medicine had died. It was not to be revived until the century was half over. The woman who made it happen was Margaret Sanger. In the 1940s and 1950s, Margaret Sanger closely followed scientific research on birth control and personally funded some of it. At the same time, the feminist-founded group Planned Parenthood F Federation of America made support for new birth control technology a major focus of its advocacy efforts. The turning point came, though, when a wealthy woman named Catherine McCormick threw her financial support behind research to produce an oral contraceptive. McCormick was heir to the international harvest of fortune. Before I contacted Aaron and David to participate in the Hangout, I carried out a little background research on the desire for the male pill in the manosphere, and specifically why, in this day and age, men do not yet have anything more advanced to prevent unwanted pregnancies than condoms, which are notoriously unreliable, and vasectomies, which are often irreversible. Many of the comments I came across in the manosphere speculated that we lacked this most basic innovation due to lobbying on the part of feminists, or actions of governments that were for some inexplicable reason keen to keep men in a semi-primitive state of reproductive slavery. What I also picked up was an undercurrent of helplessness among men. We expect somebody else, anybody else, will do the work for us and hand us safe, reliable birth control in a manner of Prometheus, who is said to have stolen fire from the gods and revealed it to men. We have waited decades for pharmaceutical companies to realize the size of pent-up demand for reliable male contraceptives and automatically start developing drugs. We expect them to see the profits that are being made from the sale of contraceptives to female and hope this will directly lead to clinical trials for male equivalents. Gentlemen, it does not work like that. It often does in the free market, but not always. And contraceptives, whether for males or females, seems to be an area of study that neither large multinational pharmaceutical companies nor governments will voluntarily initiate research into, despite the handsome profits to potentially be had. The reasons for this are beyond the scope of this post, however. On the male contraceptive front, our answers will not come from governments or large pharmaceutical companies. If we truly desire a male pill, like women, we must mobilize, fund trials, and even possibly take part in these trials. Should Wealthy male philanthropist versions of Catherine Dexter McCormick exist. They must be approached in their aid sort. Another interesting fact that Aaron and David brought up was that they had so far faced very little resistance in their efforts to develop and conduct clinical trials of male contraceptives. The little resistance they have faced in their bid to develop a male pill has not, as I incorrectly assumed, come from feminists on the left of the political spectrum, but rather Christian traditionalists on the right, who worry that men aren't with the ability to decide when and with whom we create life will descend into licentiousness and rapidly abandon the cherished idol of Christian conservatives, the nuclear family. I found myself amused about this fear expressed by the traditionalist right that men, upon having a taste of the freedoms inherent in the male pill, will be unlikely to reproduce at the rate seen today. You see, 
Their fears carry a tacit acknowledgement that the majority of men, if given the choice, will not start families or will at the very least refrain from doing so according to their female partner's schedule. Sorry ladies, no more trapping us into fatherhood and marriage. The traditionalist understands that men are at a major disadvantage due to the fact that women have reliable contraceptives and they're quite comfortable keeping men in a backward technological state to uphold the failing concepts of traditionalist style family values, further showing that the traditionalist right are certainly not allies of men. Should reproductive freedoms become a major goal for MGTOW men? That's a question each MGTOW will have to answer on his own, but it is worth noting that women did not achieve reproductive freedom until they made such freedom a priority, found the money to drive research, and specifically understood that technological in innovations would free their gender just as much as changing laws. The solution to MGTOW grievances will not be found in the halls of Congress. The ballot box? abolishing no-fault divorce or changing the minds of hypergamous females, but rather in the laboratories of researchers and little-known clinicians who, if successful, will free men from the fear of unwanted pregnancies and give men all the power that goes along with being able to choose when and if we start families. The Male Contraception Initiative is launching a crowdfunding campaign for the human clinical trials of a novel male contraceptive. I would like to encourage you to get involved the link is in the description bar. Together, we might just create the kind of future we would like to be part of. This is CS Migdal. Thank you for listening.